can't get enough of that song. <laughs> Who just wants that playing over and over and over in your head? Oh, uh, we, have, we have one. So uh, by the end of this uh, sermon series, uh, yeah, that's exactly what's going to happen. So, uh, so we have, we've been talking about margin, and we've been talking about, uh, the first week we talked about emotional margin. Last week we talked about scheduling and time margin. This week we're talking about the infamous financial margin. Um, and then next week, uh, Pastor Joe is going to be preaching on uh, moral margin. And, uh, you know, we're doing this series because they all interconnect. You know, a lot of times uh, people that struggle with uh, maybe some emotional margin issues, uh, maybe that leaches into financial uh, margin issues. So um, that's why it's so important to talk about all these. And the definition of margin that we've been using is the space before we reach our limits. Okay, and, and that's in every aspect of, of margin in our lives. Um, so quick story, and uh, I, I think I told my wife I was going to say this, but um, so we were talking uh, maybe six weeks ago. Scott asked, hey, I'm going to be gone. Can you, uh, would you be willing to preach? And he didn't give me the topic at first, and then he's like, okay, I want you to do financial margin. And so I told Nicole this, and she literally LOL'd. She laughed out loud. Yep, that's right. Uh, and uh, so in the spirit of being authentic, uh, I'm preaching on financial margin today, but that doesn't mean I have it all figured out, all right? Uh, actually, the, yesterday she uh, talked in the morning about um, a little problem I have. I, I guess you could call this maybe an addiction. Um, my Starbucks, uh, Starbucks bill. Uh, it was ninety dollars last month, and uh, that. And I'm not saying this to the gloat because I think that's pretty embarrassing that I spent that much money. That also tells me that I may have a, a scheduling margin issue because I'm tired and I need a lot of coffee. Um, so if that applies to you, that that's great. But that's just one little area of mine. So with that, let me uh, let me pray, Father God. I just pray that. Um, Today you speak through me, and that uh, this is not an easy issue. It's not an easy, easy issue for us uh, to turn over to you, to give over to you. And, Lord, we just pray that happens. We pray that uh, today we take away some things that we can go directly to you with, and specifically when it comes to financial margin. Lord, uh, we know with your strength that that can happen, and so we pray for that. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, so... Uh, I'm going to go into Proverbs 21.20. Uh, I'm not going to have you open it up because it's a real short verse. It says, the wise have wealth and luxury, but fools spend whatever they get. And I want to clarify this verse. Um, you know, this isn't saying that for those of you in the room that maybe, hey, every penny I have goes to just necessities. Because I, I know p people in my life that, that it, that's exactly what's happening. That's not what it's saying. What it is saying is for those that think it is challenge accepted to spend every penny we make, okay? That's who that's talking about. And so, um, you know, and again, I talked about Starbucks. Uh, that, for me, that, that's definitely got outside of my margin. Um, all right, so, again, in the spirit of being authentic, I, I'm hoping I'm getting max participation here, all right? If you have ever or currently have any kind of financial stress in your life, please raise your hand. All right, keep them up, keep them up, keep them up. Please look around, okay? And, and I know that's hard, but look around in this room. It's pretty much everyone. It's even our middle schoolers up here. <laughs> they have serious financial stress, all right? So <laughs> lack of funds, yes. And that causes financial stress because they can't get the stuff they want to get. So, um, but, but that's exactly, um, that's exactly the, the struggle we're having uh, as Americans where we have that financial stress and it's, it's in our culture today. Financial stress is normal and, and that's not what God wants. Um, what comes with financial stress, worry, fear, anxiety, all these things are normal today. And uh, again, God does not want us to be normal. Relationship fights, 
This is normal. And I was actually, when, when I was looking at this sermon, I was going online, and, you know, a lot of times you hear people say, well, um, finances is the number one reason for divorce. I actually see, I mean, it is close. It's definitely up there. But what finances does, it, it does predict uh, as the, the level of fights and the amount of fights go up on finances, it is a great predictor of divorce. So that's why as a church, we have to talk about this subject and we need to take it seriously. Uh, not having financial margin in our life, that is totally normal. And guess what? We, we've heard this again and again, but normal's not working. So I want to have a little, um, a little display for you. I'm going to invite uh, Pastor Joe up so we can get what financial margin looks like. Okay, so Joe has his nice little cash money up here that he's dropping. Man, apparently he has too much. All right. And uh, so Joe here, um, he brings home, this is not really Joe, but he brings home $2,500, and that is his net income. That means after taxes, all the money we pay off to Caesar, uh, that's after that. So, um, so after that, he has $2,500. And so let, we're going to just kind of go through what this looks like. So, uh, Joe, uh, you give your, your church and charities, you give $250. Uh, your, your mortgage and rent is $1,000, kind of expensive. Uh, your food bill is $300, but that probably doesn't go far enough for you. Uh, utilities is $200. Uh, your credit card bill is $50. Your car payment is 200 for the next 10 years of your life. Uh, your clothes is 20. Starbucks is 30. I got some work to do there. Um, and your miscellaneous expenses is another $200. Okay, so any math, math people here? I'm just curious. Anybody add that up? Uh, it's the weekend. I like that answer. There's no math on the weekend. All right. Uh, so that total is uh, $2,250. $2, Thank you, Joe. You can even take your cash back. Yes. Uh, uh, so that's $2,250 that for all the different expenses that Joe paid out. That leaves $250 left over. That is your margin, okay, for that month. Just in a real, real clear picture. So what can you do with that margin? Uh, that could be your savings emergency fund. That could help someone in need or a worthy cause. You could be saving for a car so you can pay cash for it. Uh, you can save for a vacation. Last week, Scott talked about refreshing yourself. That could, that could be exactly that. That could help you uh, take a little trip to refresh yourself. So what happens if you spend all $2,500? And you have zero left over, right? So you have a zero margin. God does not want us to have a zero margin in our life. And if, if that's you, this is the day to, to make a commitment to change that. All right, so let's uh, turn our Bibles to 1 Timothy uh, 6, and it's, we're going to go 6 through 10. All right, give you a second there. All right, so it says, Yet true godliness with contentment is itself great wealth. After all, we brought nothing with us, when we came into this world, and we can't take anything with us when we leave it. So if we have enough food and clothing, let us be content. But people who long to be rich fall into temptation and are trapped by many foolish and harmful desires. And that plunge them into ruin and destruction. For the love of money is the root of all kinds of evil. And some people craving money have wandered from the true faith. And pierce themselves with many sorrows. So uh, I actually went through, and you, you may have disagreement with this, but I, I just went through kind of line by line of just kind of what I took away uh, from these verses. So let's start out with true godliness with contentment is itself great wealth. What I took, took away from there, wealth is so much more than money and stuff. And that contentment is so, so powerful. And then we uh, move on to, we brought nothing with us when we came into this world, and we, take a, and we can't take anything away with us uh, when we leave it. Uh, my outside storage shed says, says otherwise, okay, I'm not going to lie. Um, 
but it's true. We, we can't take the stuff with us. So we look around our house. The stuff is not following it. Unless you have something weird in your will that you're going to put all your stuff in your, your burial plot, all right? Uh, don't recommend that. All right. Um, and then we look at, uh, but people who long to be rich fall into temptation and are trapped by many foolish and harmful desires that plunge them into ruin and destruction. You know, in, in today's world, I really took this as we have to be aware of the mass marketing machine, all right? Uh, and getting caught up in needing everything we see on, on TV, hear it on the radio. It's so powerful, and we need to, we need to protect ourselves from that. Um, but we're also going to come back to that a little bit more. All right, and then next, we, uh, for the love of money is the root of all evil. Matthew 6, 24 says, we can't have two masters. So who is your master? Is it Jesus or is it money? And as Christians, we have to decide it's going to be Jesus. So let's talk about the problem. Uh, why do so many of us trade margin, flexibility, peace for material things? So let's talk about that. Let's talk about our culture. Uh, our culture is defining happiness. And in very simple terms, the definition of happiness is more than what we have now. That's what our culture says. So today I have this, tomorrow I just need a little bit more. Tomorrow I had that, you know, this, now the next day I just need a little bit more. And we have to be aware of that 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 is not going to fill the void in our life. Jesus is going to fill that void. Uh, we just need to ha- we just need more and we will be happy. Bigger car, bigger home. New iPhone 7. Anybody want to raise their hand if they got it? I'm just curious. Oh, oh, Joel. I knew the one person that would be the most honest about it would be Joel. So that's awesome. Um, I, I'm, uh, okay. And th- then telling ourselves and, and having other people tell us we deserve it. Uh, that, that one we can get caught up. I, I, actually, <laughs> I actually put that. Jackie just said it. But I actually put down treat yourself. Okay. Um, because that, that's what our society says. We need to treat ourselves. All right. Um, and then making payments so you can get it now instead of delaying it and get it later. And again, I do not have that figured out. I'm still, uh, there, there's some work to be done there. Uh, and then we have literally lifestyled our way out of financial margin, meaning we just keep on having to get more. And, and even if our income goes up, our financial margin keeps staying little to none. All right. Um, you know, I, I'm going to talk about, since I am the college minister, uh, I do want to talk about um, young adults. You know, one of the pieces of, of advice I give. So for those that don't have their, their college kids here, this is something you can pass on. But um, I talk a lot about trying to live the, almost the college lifestyle even when they go on and get a good paying job. Uh, because if they have debt in their lives, and, and most students nowadays do, if they don't, then they don't need to worry about this. You can disregard it. But if they have financial debt, um, is live that college life, get that debt paid off. Instead of having 20 plus years of college debt, get that burden off your shoulders. Okay, so that, that's one thing I do challenge my, uh, my college students to do. So this just isn't a lifestyle problem. It's a spiritual problem. Uh, in Matthew six nineteen through 21, Jesus said, Do not store up for yourselves treasures on earth, where moths and rust destroy them, and where thieves break in and steal. Store your treasures in heaven, where moths and rust cannot destroy And thieves do not break in and steal. Wherever your treasure is, there the desires of your heart will also be. So real quick, you're you're probably like, okay, wait. Proverbs, you're talking about luxury and wealth, and that's what you should have. And how I take these two verses, you got Proverbs, and then you have Matthew 6 here, is God wants us to have balance, okay? 
And also, we have to be aware of the definition of luxury and wealth uh, back in, in biblical times is not the same as today. You know, there's a lot of people that, um, you know, basically if you had, a, you had a house over your head, you had three meals a day, for, for many places in the world, that was wealth and luxury, okay? So I want to put that in context. Um, so the translation of, of those verses, where your money goes, your heart will follow. So I ask you this, with that statement, where is your heart based on that statement? And really examine that. Uh, and then asking God on how he wants us to manage the resources that he entrusts us with. So how many of us do that each day? Actually pray and say, God, I want to be able to trust you wholeheartedly in my finances. Because I'll tell you, for me, that's a, that's a piece of the pie that I still have a hard time giving up. There's a lot of things I've been able to give up. Uh, when it comes to um, saying, I'm going to give this over to Jesus, but finances is still not 100% there. I, I think I'm on my way, but I'm not 100% there. Um, so let, let's talk about that. Uh, financial margin habits, okay? We're going to talk about, uh, this is the oversimplified. Uh, you are more than welcome to talk to me after uh, service if uh, you're going to need help with this. Uh, or we can get you to someone that uh, can help you with this because that, that's what we want. We want to be a church that helps one another. So we're talking about financial margin habits. First thing we should be doing, and this is uh, a hard thing with finances, is prayer first. So when we're getting ready to make that big purchase, whether it's a house, a car, maybe even a computer, is to be praying. Do I... Maybe you need a computer, maybe you need it for work, maybe you need it for school, but do you need the $300 laptop or the $1,000, $2,000 laptop, all right? Um, once you do that, you need to budget, and this is, again, where Nicole laughs at me because we're, we, we have months that we're really good about budgeting, and there's other months, like right now, we're preparing for a baby to come, so budgeting has kind of gone out the window because baby comes first. <laughs> so, um, so budget, and then uh, asking for help. If this is a struggle in your life, again, like I mentioned a second ago, uh, we want you to know that there's resources here. Um, actually, I, I forgot to mention it in the beginning, but I, so I've actually gone through Financial Peace University. Uh, it's, a, it's a Dave Ramsey class. I've gone through it twice. I've been the coordinator twice. Um, and again, I still don't have it figured out, okay? But, um, but I, I do uh, have a passion to help people with that. Uh, I need to have a greater passion to help myself with that. But, uh, but, but I do. I, I really do want to help people. And again, we have other people in the church uh, that can help you with that. Uh, because I do think, you know, accountability of saying, hey, uh, not only do I need to do a budget, but I need to have somebody hold me accountable to that. And maybe that's your spouse, but if you don't have a spouse, then, then find someone that can say, you're giving them permission to say, hey, how's your budget going? Are, are, are any areas still out of whack with what your budget is? Uh, because that's how we get better, and that's how we become stronger as a church. Because as a whole, the church will become stronger when we have better financial margin. All right, and then the last, we, we end with prayer, okay? You know, Jesus prayed a lot, and, and we should mimic that. And so we need to start out with prayer and then also end with prayer, all right? So now let's talk about what happens uh, when you put God first in your finances. Okay, so I'm, I'm going to talk about tithing. You know, each week we talk about tithes and offerings, um, and I'll, I'll tell you, it's not the easiest for me to talk about because I've been at churches that it's like once a month there is a sermon on money. Uh, and I don't know about you, but I have a hard time with that because that, there, there's a, that's an important part. Jesus talked a lot about money, but that's not all what Jesus talked about. So we have to make sure we're covering all the different areas. So in um, Malachi uh, 3.10 
It says, bring all the tithes into the storehouse so there will be enough food in my temple. If you do, says the Lord of heaven's army, I will open the windows of heaven to you. I will pour out a blessing so great you won't have enough room to take it in. Try. Put me to the test. And I think that's just so powerful. God saying, try. Put me to the test. And when I'm talking about tithes, I'm not saying uh, this is between you and God. It's not between Covenant Grove and you. It's, it's ultimately between you and God. And so if that's a dollar, uh, and, and maybe you haven't tithed at all and ever, I'm going to challenge you. Put, put a dollar in there and see what God does with that. And then, and then over time, grow that. And I, I'll tell you, you'll continue to see uh, God's blessings. Uh, it, tithing also teaches us to give God our first and our best. And, and also that we'll actually become more content. Because now we're actually, we have less money in, in our household, right? Uh, but it's just saying, you know what? I'm all right with that. I'm going to reprioritize my life so I know that God is first and everything else comes second. Uh, it teaches us God will do more uh, with whatever we give him than we can do. And then tithing builds faith. And, and I think it, I, I totally, 100% believe in that because uh, as you tithe and as you, you give control, and that's what tithe, tithes is all about, is relinquishing that control of saying, God, I don't need to have this power over this, these resources you've given me. It's saying, I trust you with this, and I trust that whatever amount I'm giving up, that I, I'll be able to figure out how to, how to rebudget and reallocate money that will honor you. Uh, you end up with more... Um, Moving on from tithing, uh, you end up with more of what matters. Uh, you may not have everything that uh, physically people uh, want, uh, but you'll have what no one else has, and, and that's growing uh, closer spiritually with Jesus. Uh, you will truly fill up your life with things that matter, and it will just feel better. Uh, when you have time uh, and financial margin, you will spend time with the people you love. Again, something I'm, I, I have to work on. Uh, and invest in the things that are most important. And then um, you end up uh, being rich spiritually and rich relationally. And you're rich with the things that matter most to God. And that's the most important part. All right. Um, I did go fast. <laughs> um, so I have uh, a, a quick story. Um, so I lived in uh, Tanzania. Uh, it's an East African country below Kenya, above Mozambique, for 15 months as a Marine uh, security guard. And so I, I kind of lived the Kush life when you're talking about living in Africa. Um, but... I, I got to have a lot of amazing experiences there, and one of the biggest things, the biggest takeaway for me was uh, learning that contentment really does bring happiness. And, uh, you know, a couple things I saw real quick. Um, one was, um, I, I forgot where we were driving to, uh, dirt roads, you know, little, not pretty flat, but I remember seeing, and I just, this guy's face is just etched into my mind. This guy literally, not a shirt on his back, just wearing shorts and shoes, is pushing probably four to 500 pounds of rice and beans up a slight grade of hill, and it's literally, he, he's literally uh, smiling the whole way. And... I'm like, why in the world are you smiling? It's hot out. It's humid. I'm sitting in my air-conditioned car, and I'm like, I, I, I just was blown away by that, that somebody could be so happy um, and, and probably is getting paid very little money to do that. 
Now, I, I do uh, want to wrap up the sermon with a couple questions for you. Is First question, what are you going to do today to create more financial margin in your life? And then the second question, are you going to give control to God over your finances? And I, and I purposely said there today because one thing I realized is as we get further away from a sermon, because I know this is for me, as we get further away, we, it just drifts away. So if there's something going on in your life that you need to be working on, pray over that and, and figure out an action today that will be God-honoring. All right. I'm going to go ahead and pray. Father God, Lord, I just pray that um, we can give uh, and relinquish the power of finances over to you. Lord, it, it's something that uh, many of us struggle with. We want to keep control because we think we can do a better job. But Lord, we know we can't. And we just pray for that. We pray that uh, you change our hearts and, and guide us to how you want us uh, to utilize these resources you've given us. Lord, you are so powerful, and uh, we pray that you can change our hearts. Lord, we love you in Jesus' name. Amen. All right. Let me give you this good word. I pray that God, the source of hope, will fill you completely with joy and peace because you trust in him. Then you will overflow with confident hope through the power of the Holy Spirit. Go in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen.